Welcome to the Two Blokes Chatting Radio Show on 94.7 The Pulse. Music, interviews, news and, well, two blokes chatting. Now, here are the two blokes. And on the line we have got uh, Derek Rogers who operates a business uh, called The Thrive Movement Australia. Good morning, Derek. Good morning, Rob. No, that's Neil, but that's okay. Uh, Neil. Yeah, you should. You Rob, should be Rob's to, over here. You should be able to tell by the dulcet tones of my voice. That's okay. <laughs> hey, mate, uh, welcome to the Two Blokes Chatting Radio Show. Now, uh, you and I have had a bit of a conversation about uh, some of the things you want to talk about, and I think, broadly speaking, we're talking about uh, health, but men's health in particular. Absolutely. I thought um, this morning would be a good opportunity to just reinforce um, this week's November. Um, most people are aware of the great work that Movember have been doing. In fact, they lead the world in, um, in men's health and research. And then also on Thursday, I don't know whether you're aware of it, it was International Men's Day. Uh, now, we have female listeners who would be suggesting it's always International Men's Day, but uh, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, so it's celebrating the good work that good men do. And men have had a bit of a bashing... Um, over the years, and with some blokes, um, rightly so. But so it was a, celebrating that, you know, we have Father's Day, we have Mother's Day, um, we have International Women's Day, we have International Men's Day, and we have lots of stuff. So I thought off the back of that this morning, we should have a bit of a chat about men's health and how men are going generally. And uh, we, we had uh, Rob alluding, uh, completely unrelated, as it happened earlier, to uh, the fact that he heard that episode uh, on a, a rival radio station about... Uh, the increasing levels of suicide. And I guess that's a stat that you can put your finger on and go, yep, that makes some sense. But it's clearly broader than that. And I would have thought the end of a very sad road. There's a whole lot leading up to that, I would have thought. Absolutely. And uh, from, I mean, I've been there myself and it's, um, you just, you can't stand the pain anymore and you just want it to go away. You feel you have no value to anybody. And your mind can literally turn inwards that convince you that the only option and the right thing to do is to take yourself out of this world. Um, of course, that's not how your family and friends see it, but it, it's just how people see it, and, and that's what they, they do, unfortunately. And there's like eight people a day in Australia, on average, are taking their own life. Guess how many are men? I would have thought seven, based on what I would have thought. Yeah, it was six out of eight, and mm. now I'm uh, talking to Dr. Zach from um, uh, November. He's saying yes, it's up to seven now. So this is not good. You know, blokes, we're not travelling too well. We die, guess how many years, average less than women? Uh, is it something like six? Oh, geez, you've done your homework. <laughs> yeah. No, that, no, Rob can't count past seven. <laughs> <laughs> He was going yeah, to that was the last the number I knew. <laughs> no, I had I had heard that. Uh, one of the things that popped up in the article this morning, Derek, and I'm sure you, your own personal circumstance and and research may confirm, was that the perception that people put on themselves as youngsters by their peers of what a male should be, and then as they work their way through life and work and, and uh, family and then having families of their own, they feel as though they haven't reached that level and, and that's the um, that's where the, the trouble starts, that they're, that they're not a full man, so to speak? Yeah, there is a real crisis with our young people in, in Australia at the moment about what it is to be a good man, what is masculinity all about, um, and we really need to have a big, rich discussion about who's our role models and you know for, for boys growing up uh, 0 to 12 their dad can be an axe murderer and he's still their role model and then um, and then the hormones and their brain develops and they realize well there could be something a bit wrong going on here but it's that is the problem um, and the social media and just the conditioning that kids have these days and their role models is something we need to have those rich conversations about absolutely and role models can um, well let's use the sporting because uh, well Neil and I and many others are connected to sport and a lot of our early role models were sporting people sometimes they always didn't behave the best but we still we still wanted to we aspired to be like them but 
sometimes it was the the talent they displayed that young people try to reach and fail and that I know from personal experience coaching cricket uh, cricket and football teams yep. that sometimes youngsters that can't be the player they thought they could be um, rather than the, the type of person it's more that the uh, the player they could be or so they're functioning a uh, member of community that they struggle to deal with and, and that kicks in problems in that teenage years yeah absolutely and um, I was um Really distressed to hear of a friend's um, son at 15 got dropped from the football team um, for his performance, and and he took his own life. So, you know, really sad and really tragic that um, this happens. And you can have your role model as being, um, you know, you want to be the best, which is great. But the trouble becomes if your whole life uh, a role revolves around I have to be this person and get to this level you don't have a plan B so we all need a plan B and listening to some of the interviews with the guys on ABC with the Australian Olympic athletes training for the Olympic Games and then of course it was cancelled so they've had four years of dedicated training and that's just been focus and focus and then bang it's off Um, okay hopefully it'll be on next year but a lot of them have struggled with mental health concerns because they haven't had a plan B. And is it also a bit about the definition of success? I I, I met someone uh, some years ago who uh, was the first emergency for an Olympic swimming team, right? Now, clearly, in Australia, there are 25 million people, and she, well, let's say, therefore, about 12.5 million women, Yep. And she became the seventh rated swimmer in Australia or something. But because she missed that that um, measurable success, if you will, it wasn't enough for her and she was bitterly disappointed. Now, I understand bitterly disappointed. that, But when people have got a perception that says the only form of success is being this thing, surely that's it, it's about that what we mean by success. Well, that's right. And that's, you know, success is, can come in many forms and I think um, to be a, a successful person in life it's got to be more than just one thing uh, a good way to look at it is what would you like to be have read out in your eulogy for that person you know okay I was a champion swimmer I made the Olympic team okay what what else would you like to be read out at the funeral about that person about their character mm. yeah yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a pretty important aspect of it, isn't it? I guess the other thing, too, that I'm, I've spent the last couple of days, uh, the last couple of days, but during the week, I spent a couple of days up in the uh, northwest of the state and then uh, the week before up in the north of the state and interacting in regional, small regional towns, I think it's fair to say. Um, there's even more of a crisis, apparently, in those parts of the world, particularly in the farming community, and there are programs being put in place by health services to work with uh, agricultural folk. Um, it seems to me that there's a lot of focus on stuff going on in in the main centres. These other places are they getting a bit forgotten? Yeah, well, you know, you talk to anybody in the the rural areas, they they complain that the city always gets the resources, and certainly uh, with health resources and allied health, you know, it's it's my family live um, up Kahuna, up in the Murray, and it's the smaller resources known as small of the town and it's definitely a problem but you've also got the problem with men and here's a good example you mentioned with farmers men we tend to associate our identity as who we are and then who our self-worth is with our job and farmers have been taking their own life at a rate of a couple of days for years because if they fail as a farmer and this is the this is the thing that doesn't make sense to you and I miles away is that it's not their fault the crops have failed there's been a drought or there's been a flood or the you know that the now that they can't sell because of the Chinese have suddenly taken their uh, returned their goods then they feel a failure to their family and not everybody but this sense of I'm a failure because I haven't been able to provide this very strong role model that's been there for goodness knows millennia um, and not being able to openly talk about it with their family is um, a recipe for disaster unfortunately. 
Derek, there's a lot of people like yourself doing a lot of good work behind the scenes, but I feel you're just working against a tsunami of opposition from the top end. And I, re I recall back, uh, and it's probably 10 or 15 years ago, when Nike, their marketing campaign was coming second is first loser. Now, I know that might be a, be a great thing to pump people up and go and buy a pair of uh, running shoes, but it sends, to me, it sent a pretty clear message about this this role model and feeling um, what, what's important in life. It just completely destroyed it in my mind. Uh, so if we're getting messages like that from community leaders and, and probably um, you go into the political sphere, that does that frustrate you that you're you're you know fighting against this wall that keeps coming at you? Well, yes, you've got you know companies like Nike with their their million or billion dollar budgets and, and McDonald's with their multi billion dollar budgets and our our government, our local communities, we don't have the the advertising revenue power to be able to counter those. I mean, Australia is leading the world in, in men's health and, and health and well being particularly, but yeah, it's certainly hard when you've got the sporting role models like Nike um, pushing their agenda at absolutely at the uh, expense of the the well-being of others and you know um, there's a lot of people trying to counter that but you're right it, it is it is hard work it's we're slowly getting there but what we need is these of course these big multinational giants to um, come on board and create a win-win for them and for everybody else take a bit of win. community responsibility i think is the yeah. the key yeah. thing that's missing there's plenty of rhetoric there but uh, there's not a lot of actual support when when money and and uh other things take uh, take focus over health. Well, that's right. Look at um, our cricket season's coming up, and our um, and our one day series now twenty twenty. And who's it sponsored by? Junk food, KFC, Big Bash. Mm. You know, um, great, yeah. great marketing ploy. I mean, great, great place to, to get into, but uh, well, it's not a great message. Used to be cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. We've moved <laughs> on. Move forward a little bit. <laughs> hey, Derek, we've got uh, we've got some constraints around time. Then we could sit here and chat forever, but uh, we uh, probably should uh, call it quits while we can. It's really important to, given that there will be people listening who you know this may have triggered some conversations in their mind. We really encourage you to talk to an organisation if that is you. Like Beyond Blue, you can contact them on 1300 22 46 36. That's 1300 22 46 36. Or of course, beyondblue.org.au. You have a business based here on the Ballerine Peninsula. It's called the Thrive Movement website, please. Yep. So that's just www.thethrivemovement.com.au. And uh, we must say to the listener, be very very important to remember to put the the thrive in because you might go to somewhere else if you just put thrive in and the dot com dot au yeah. as well yes yeah very important so the thrive movement is uh, a very important thing to to put in Derek Absolutely. thanks for that's all right and I c I can connect them with um, some great um, as you said, if people are urgent, feeling urgently they want to connect, Lifeline, Beyond Blue, absolutely got great 24-hour service. If they just want to connect with men and have more deeper, enriching conversations, then there's a great example like here in Geelong, the Man Walk community, that uh, I was supposed to be there this morning, but I sp just spoke to you guys instead. Well, thank you very much for that. So there's men's circles, there's a whole lot of things that, yeah, look, I'm happy to have a chat with anybody and if I can help them, then, you know, that's what I'm here for. That is good just important to uh, not be embarrassed about or ashamed about who you are because we're all different uh, trying to aspire to be someone else is a pointless exercise just do what you uh, do well yourself and feel good about it I think that's a very important message yeah and given COVID you know it's okay to be not okay sometimes hmm. absolutely thank you Derek Derek Rogers from the Thrive Movement Australia we'll chat soon thanks Neil thanks Rod have a great day guys all the best thanks. bye bye see you mate